John chapter number 14 tonight. We want to bring the message that God put in our hearts out of John chapter number 14. We'll be down at verse number 8. John 14, 8. And those of you, when you find your place, you like and you can and will, you can stand and honor the reading of God's word. John chapter number 14, down at verse number 8. Again, read the Bible correctly. It would say, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it satisfied us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And now saith, how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest not, thou not, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe in me, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Let us pray, Father. I do now come to you and ask you to have your blessing on the reading of thy word. Lord, that you'd have your blessing so much upon this message. I pray, Father God, that you just uh, help, help us that we may obey thy spirit. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory for these things we ask in thy name. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, thank God for the scripture tonight as I want to bring the message, a father's product, a father's product tonight. As we see in the scripture, please let me kind of set the stage a little bit, and I'll try my best not to be long tonight, but I want to just give you the God's word uh, and understand the text I said uh, that this is the time period when our Lord and Savior is with his disciples in the upper room. Now we know what took place in the upper room, and uh, we know what is to come. Uh, we understand that while they were there having supper, we understand that he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And some of the times we look into the scripture, we don't get all the stories out in some of the gospels of what all took place that night when our Lord and Savior was talking to the disciples. And we understand as he was coming down and he was talking about things uh, and he was kind of giving them some forewarnings about some things. Uh, and, and I guess you could say they call it his last talk uh, with his disciples because this was the last time that he was with them before the crucifixion. Now we know he came back later and he spent time with them and he began to teach them again, but it was in a different manner. Uh, but here we see that as he was talking, that Philip comes up out, and we're not talking about our Philip tonight, but we see that Philip came up out of the blue and he just basically told the Lord, he said, show us the Father. Show us the Father. We want to see the Father. We want to know what he is, what he looks like, we understand the Bible teaches us that no man has ever seen God at any time. But folks, notice what the Lord told Philip that night uh, uh, that they were in that upper room. He basically said, if you've seen the Father, you have seen me. If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Because Jesus Christ uh, was a product uh, of God. He was product of the Heavenly Father. So we see that he was trying to comfort his disciples in these sayings by allowing them to understand that if you listen folks if you know Christ as your personal Savior you know God isn't that a blessing tonight yeah. that you know the creator of all things you know the creator of heaven and earth you know the creator of all mankind and all animal kingdom uh, God has created all things, uh, and you know him if you know Jesus Christ. Uh, you may not know what he looks like. Uh, folks, I mean, it's amazing. It blows my mind that when we read the Scripture, we can pick up on the descriptions of God. Uh, we can pick up on the descriptions of Christ. Uh, we can pick up the descriptions of the Holy Ghost because of their character and because of their attributes. Uh, but folks, I'm here to tell you, it blows my mind that we still don't have a very clear picture of Jesus Christ in his physical form. Uh, we know that if we can't even comprehend that, uh, that we don't even have uh, the, 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 a, a, a sight uh, or a vision or a look uh, of God in his spirit form. Uh, because the Bible said that he is a spirit. Uh, so we see here tonight that he's trying to comfort his disciples and letting them know that if you know me, you know him. If you've seen me, 
you have seen him. Not only was he trying to comfort them, but he was trying to teach his disciples uh, that this is of a truth that he says in the scripture. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. So he's trying to teach them just simply to believe in what he's saying. It blows our minds again tonight that sometimes we do not believe what God simply says in his word. Uh, we want to believe, we say we believe, but yet we don't believe. Uh, we was talking, I can't get it off my mind, we were talking this morning about uh, uh, having the faith, uh, uh, how that they raised the dead, we, uh, uh, that Brother Gary was talking about, Jesus raised the dead, Peter raised one from the dead, uh, but yet nobody else has ever raised anyone from the dead. Uh, and I believe tonight, if we can have the faith, that God can touch uh, a little child's body and remove the, the rash. Uh, folks, I tell you, it's the same God. If we believe that he can keep someone from dying uh, and, and bring them back from the dead, if be so. Uh, but you know, as I was talking to Brother Gary, hey, listen, when our loved ones die and go home, uh, hey, listen, we don't want them to come back into this life we're living in. Uh, we don't want them to have to go through it anymore. Uh, listen, they're better off where they are with God. Uh, but maybe we should just pray Pray it that God will, that he would want us to keep our loved ones a little longer, that maybe God would remove the pain uh, and remove the sorrow and remove the diseases, uh, remove the sicknesses uh, so they can live on with us. Uh, but listen, just don't pray for them to live. Pray that God will heal them and so they can live. Amen. Hey, when my mom was sick, uh, I would never want her to continue on uh, going through the radiations and going through the chemos uh, and over and over and over. Uh, it was better for her to go on to be with Jesus uh, because now she has no pains, no worries, uh, no sorrows. Folks, she's a living good uh, and I would never want her to come back as much as I love her, as much as I want to be around her. I would not want her to come back. Uh, what I'm saying today is simply this. Uh, God was trying to teach them just believe what I have to say and then not only that he was trying to prepare his disciples for what was yet to come what was to take place and there in that upper room I want you to understand that that is a type of the church Amen. I believe that those disciples, if they were not there in that upper room, they would have missed out on the blessings of God. They would have missed out on the comforting. They would have missed out on the teaching. They would have missed out on the preparation. They would not have been ready for what had taken place or what was getting ready to take place. Folks, I believe that's why it's important that we be at church, that we should be at the house of God. I believe that that's where God's going to feed us and take care of us and cover our hearts. Uh, uh, let me say that that upper room is a type of Sunday school. Amen. A type of Bible school. Uh, it is a place to be taught. Uh, folks, I tell you, if we ever get to the point uh, to where we think we've done God it all and we know it all, uh, you've just begun to know something uh, and you don't know nothing when you get right down to it. You say, preacher, I get tired sometimes of hearing the same things over and over. Uh, listen, there's one thing they taught us uh, when we were in school uh, I'll remember it, I can remember it very well, uh, when I was in the first grade, uh, things are a lot different now, uh, when I was in the first grade, they were just teaching us ABCs uh, and how to count to ten, uh, folks when I got to the second grade, uh, they were still teaching ABCs uh, and how to count to ten, uh, you say why is that uh, because they're trying to do the reputation thing teach it over and over until we got it. Uh, by the time we got done with second grade, uh, we were not only counting, but we were adding, subtracting, and taking away. We were doing uh, multiplications, and we were doing all kinds of things. Uh, uh, you say, what happened? Because we were taught uh, in early age uh, over and over and over. By the time we started growing, we started getting it. Uh, I say it's why we ought to be in Sunday school. We ought to show up at Bible school. Uh, listen, you're never too young or never too old uh, to be at Bible school. Amen. Uh, listen, my grandmother, uh, I'll never forget the last Bible school she went to. She was not what well, she was 92 when she came to Bible school. I got her up in front of the kids uh, and she told the kids, she said, I've been going to Bible school ever since I was your age. Uh, and she said, I still go to Bible school. Uh, if I just have to sit there and listen to the opening and that's all I get involved in. She said, I want to be at Bible school. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, 
sing you. I say that's where you did be taught at. Uh, that upper room uh, is also a type of preaching. Amen. Where we need to hear the preaching of God's word. Uh, we need to be under good Bible preaching. Uh, and I believe the more we get under Bible preaching and listen to Bible preaching, the better we become as Christians for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we're not only being taught through the preaching. But we are being told on what we're supposed to do according to the word of God. Now, then let me go on and say that we see Christ and the Father in our scripture tonight. Uh, and we see that they are one. Amen. Now we know this. Uh, we talked about it before. But we see they are one. Uh, he said if you know me, if you've seen me, if you heard me, then you know the Father. You've seen the Father and you've heard the Father. Folks, I'm telling you here tonight uh, what a blessing it was that night. Uh, when they were in the upper room uh, and God was comforting them uh, uh, Christ was comforting them and teaching them and preparing them that they were getting ready to experience something uh, listen, the day of Pentecost that we've been studying on uh, and talking about uh, it started in that upper room that night uh, whenever they got a touch of God uh, because that night they must have them realized hey, listen, this is not only Christ set before me, but this is God uh, and folks, I'm here to tell you that he's just as real tonight in our church. Uh, he's just as real tonight in our hearts uh, as he was in that upper room. Hallelujah. God is real and he is here. Amen. Uh, you say, how do you know that preacher? Because he lives within me. Uh, Jesus Christ said that I am him in him and he is in me. Uh, boy, I'm going to tell you what a blessing. He <laughs> had God in him. Amen. Uh, and folks, now we have the opportunity that we have Christ within us. Uh, and we too, hallelujah, can have him right here with us. Uh, so when I come to church, uh, I bring him with me. When I go to work, uh, he's there by my side. Side. Hey, listen, whenever I go on vacation, he goes along with me. So I have to be careful what I do, what I say, where I go. Why? Because God is right there with me. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I could not even imagine going down the highway without God being my pilot. Amen. Some people put on there and he's heard that God is their co-pilot. Oh, no. He's the pilot. I'm just along for the ride. Amen. Because ain't been a many a time I've depended on God to stop that vehicle when it needed to be stopped. To swerve when it needed to swerve. To go when it needed to go. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, God is in control of that. Oh, listen now. I said they are one. You see one, you see the other. You know one, you know the other. Philip said, let us see the Father. Oh, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, I said it's the product of God. We should be able, hey, people should be able to see God in us. Amen. Why? Because not only is Jesus Christ a product of God, but we are also a product of God. Amen. Now listen, the fact that we look at the earthly father just for a moment tonight, uh, uh, we think that we talked this morning about fathers, uh, and folks, this is still Father's Day as far as my calendar tells me and my clock tells me. So we're still preaching fathers tonight. Amen. Uh, but I'm thankful I get to preach about the Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father, glory to God. Listen, I'm here to tell you that some uh, some fathers, earthly fathers, uh, uh, they build things with their hands. Uh, they make things. Uh, and they work behind a desk. Uh, they have a job. Uh, and so many times uh, we look at that man uh, and what he does for a living. And we say that is his product. Uh, when I, If I was to go down to where Brother Bill works at, uh, where he's got that garage. Uh, oh, I've been by there. Hey, yeah, I've seen some of his work. Amen. Uh, I saw him still sitting there, by the way. But anyway, uh, y'all get that man to laugh. But I said, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying is, when you look down there, uh, and you go down there and look, uh, and he rolls a car out of that garage, uh, you can see the product uh, of who he is. Uh, you see his work. Uh, you see your work, see other men's work and the things in which they do. And so therefore, sometimes they get tagged and say, well, he's a carpenter, he's a mechanic, uh, he's an auto body person, or he's a, 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 a teacher, or he's, uh, or he's this or he's that. Uh, that's their product. Uh, but here I am to tell you tonight, uh, 
Oh, we need to we need to be the product of God if all possible. Uh, we need to let people see uh, more than just the materialistic things. Uh, I'm telling you folks, uh, that materialistic product, uh, it'll be here today and it'll be gone tomorrow if we're not careful. But if we are of uh, Jesus Christ and have Jesus within us and we are a product of God, uh, it will be forevermore and everlasting. Amen. Uh, we need to be the product of the heavenly father above all things we may not do and we may not act exactly like like our dads in this world I tell you folks you'd you be able to be thankful to that, that I didn't act like my dad that I didn't do the things that my dad done I tried everything in the world to keep from doing what my dad done we didn't come to some of his things but you know what before I was a carpenter my dad was was a carpenter and before he was a carpenter uh, my, my grandpa was a carpenter so it just had to be that it was fall I would fall into that line and become a carpenter and folks listen there's that they could be worse things in life uh, but I'm a saying tonight uh, uh, there's a lot of other things uh, you might look at my dad and look at his characteristics uh, and you say man you're nothing like your dad because I'm not uh, but I'm here to tell you something uh, as a Christian uh, I, I want to be a splitting image of any way possible of my heavenly father. Amen. I want people to see God in me. I want people to feel God in me. I want people to know that God is in me. And they don't even have to question it. They don't have to ask about it. They just know by the way I live my life, by the things in which I do, by the way in which I act. I'm here to tell you, I want God to be in me. Amen. I got to thinking back in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26. You heard me say it before. The Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. Oh, listen now. That makes God, that makes us God's product. Whenever he formed man from the dust of the ground, you say, preacher, are you saying that God is made of dust? Oh no, see God has always been, but God had to form man, so he made him out of the dust of the ground. He made him out of the worst thing that you can ever have. Dust causes allergies, dust causes sicknesses, Dust sometimes can be annoying. And it's amazing how dust can grow when it, nothing else can. If you don't believe me, go home and look under your bed. I guarantee you there's some dust there. And you say, honey, did you not mop the floor? Did you not vacuum and clean out from under the bed? They'll tell you I just done it yesterday. But somehow that dust grows back. Folks, that's just like man. Amen. Uh, they just keep showing up. Uh, but what I'm saying is God formed man. Uh, and then the Bible says uh, that when God formed man, he breathed life into his nostril and he became a living soul. There is the product of God, a living soul. Amen. Folks, I tell you, you, if you don't have God, you're not alive. You're dead according to the word of God. You're living in darkness. Amen. You're not even a person according to the word of God. Folks, I tell you, it takes God to make us who we are. I said we are a product of God. We may never look like our Heavenly Father physically, but we should look like Him spiritually. Amen. I got to thinking about God. And you know, God, the Bible gives us a very good description of His characteristics. Over in Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 22, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It says joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Uh, against such there is no law. So there, my friend, we have the nine characteristics uh, uh, and attributes of God himself. Uh, and notice in that scripture, if you would, uh, that that, uh, that word is uh, to pronounce the fruit, as you've heard before, it's singular. In other words, uh, it's just not nine individual fruit. Uh, it is one fruit. Uh, and in that one fruit, uh, you have the nine different aspects. Uh, can I say, if you have one, you should have them all. Amen. I believe that the child of God, the product of the Heavenly Father, they ought to have love in their heart and in their soul. 
They ought to have joy in their hearts and in their soul. You should not have to be primed to get excited about God, to get excited about heaven, to get excited about salvation. It ought to come an automatic thing that you are happy inside that you're saved and going to heaven. If you, I say that, that you ought to have a Christian, a child of God, a product of God, of the Father, ought to have peace in their heart. They ought to be long-suffering. They ought to be gentle and good and faith, have faith, meekness and temperance where there is no law, what the Bible said. In other words, they should be nothing binding it. They should be nothing stopping it. It should be freely in your heart. Then you say, preacher, oh, why is it that we're not all like that? Why is it that I don't have all the fruit of the Spirit. I said if you have one, you should have them all. The thing of it is, we just need to work on some of them, amen, and improve on some of them. Some of those that we don't, uh, that we're not too uh, too keen on, we need to work on those things. Paul said, work out your own salvation. Uh, and I believe God is telling us, uh, in order for us uh, to mirror the image of God uh, that he's made us like, uh, then we need to work on those areas. Uh, some of us need to work on loving, amen, loving one another. That's what the Bible teaches. Uh, hey, some of us need to work uh, on the joy. Uh, there's no sense of walking around with the frown on your face. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's the honest truth. Uh, sometimes we wonder uh, why in the world is Christian so down and out. Uh, my goodness, has the devil been beating on you that bad? Uh, hey, uh, tell him to get behind you, put a smile on your face, and be happy, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, we ought to work on those things where you need to work on uh, having the peace in our heart. You say, preacher, they something bothering my heart. Man, you need to get in the altar. You need to beg God to get that thing taken care of so that you can have peace uh, in your heart. Uh, I said you need to work on being long-suffering. Uh, that, folks, that's the same thing as having patience, amen. You say, I don't want to pray for patience. Uh, I didn't say pray for patience. Just ask for it. But amen. Don't pray for it. Just ask for it. You say, well, what's the difference? You, you have to ask for it. You'll find out. God will give you some patience. Someone said, I would ask God for patience, but I'm afraid I'd have to wait on him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm saying here tonight, some of us need to work on that area. Hey, listen, uh, if you need that work on, hey, just take some of these little ones home with you. It'll try your patience real quick. Uh, and you'll find out that how you need to pray and ask God uh, to help you with your patience. Uh, some of us need to work on being gentle and good. Uh, some of us need to work on our faith. Uh, I said some of us need to work on the meekness uh, and the temperance. Amen. Oh, I tell you, if you want to mirror the image of God, we need to work on that fruit. Amen. Listen, I got to thinking. When I was looking at that, praying about that this afternoon, and I was looking at that fruit, uh, I couldn't help but to think. I said, Lord, uh, I am seeing one fruit here that's got nine different attributes. Uh, and I can't help but to think uh, about that tree of life over there in heaven that we learned back over there in Revelation. Uh, that the Bible said that that tree of life, uh, it's on the side of the river, on the side of the street over there. And the Bible says uh, over there that it has uh, 12 matters of fruit. Uh, boy, can you imagine? God's only given us nine to do. What if he gave you 12? You say, man, I'm done for right there. I'm sunk right there. I could, I can't hardly get the nine, let alone if they were 12 uh, that I had to do. Uh, but the Bible said that they were uh, 12 fruits. Uh, and get this, it said that it bare it monthly. Every month, uh, it bared a new fruit, uh, a 12 fruit. But I'm telling you what's the truth. I, you say, well, I don't know if I'll ever get there. When we get to heaven, we will. We'll have every one of them. Hallelujah. I don't know how many that is. Uh, you take 12, and you say, well, maybe it's the same fruit. He didn't say that. He said 12 matter of fruit uh, that bear, amen, monthly. Every month, there's another fruit with 12 attributes. Every month, another month go by. Another month go by. Hey, listen, I, we ain't going to be keeping track of time anyway. We're not going to be tricking, picking, uh, uh, keeping track of, of the months and the years while we're in heaven. But just think about it. 10,000 years you got it done. 10,000 times those uh, months, uh, however many months God wants, uh, and that many of fruit uh, that God's going to give. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe we're going to bear it. Amen. 
we're going to be in the image of God because we are a product of the Father. I want you to note something here in the Scripture, and I'm going to be done. Note right here in our text. I better get back there to it. Note in the text tonight uh, where the Bible says uh, in verse number 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Notice he put the words, uh, the word works in there. Can I say that the Bible is extra, it, 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 Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples and say, listen, you're going to have to put some work in this thing. You're going to have to do some things. Just don't come and sit down and just show up and expect God to bless me. While we come in, we sit down and cross our arms and say, go ahead and bless me if you can, God. No, we ought to come expecting a blessing. Come wanting a blessing. Come looking for that blessing to take place. And if we don't get it, we ought to stay here till we get it. And just want God to bless our hearts. Uh, but we have to work for it. Uh, we have to put forth our efforts. Uh, we have to work hard sometimes. Uh, sometimes we, some of us have to work harder. But listen, it'll be worth it all one of these days. Yeah. When we get over to the other side. Oh, listen to me. Philip and the rest of the disciples can see God through the works of Jesus Christ. Every time that Christ healed someone and every time that Christ performed a miracle, they were work, watching the works of God. And when Jesus said, if you're not going to believe that God's in me, then look at my works and then you believe the works. Can I say this? Listen, if man cannot see God in you, if you can't go around, and, if you're not going around and telling people, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, I'll not take a part of that, I'll not do that. If you're not going to do that, at least let them see God through your work. Listen, folks, I'm here to tell you something. Now, I do work a secular job, and you know that. But listen, when I'm on that secular job, I'm just as much as a preacher, a pastor, and a Christian as I am when I'm here at the house of God. And I'm thankful unto the Lord when I show up to work, as you've heard me say, they know that the preacher's on the job site. Uh, hey, listen, uh, they know uh, my life uh, by my own works. Uh, I put just as much uh, into what I'm a building as much as I try to put into a building a message uh, and preaching the word of God. Uh, you say, preacher, how the work can you do that? When you do it for God, it's for his glory anyway. I don't want somebody, hey, listen, it won't, don't bother me one bit. If someone says there was a preacher worked on my house, maybe they got to bless it. Amen. Bless their home. I'm trying to get you to understand uh, that sometimes we have to put the word as God's product. Uh, we should show God through our works uh, and not only in this world uh, but in our spiritual lives uh, no matter what we do uh, whenever we're in the choir singing let God sing through you uh, I believe if we turn over our singing voices uh, and our abilities uh, and sing out for the glory of God uh, then, then God will step in and on it uh, the spirit will swoop through it uh, and you'll never know there's somebody in the congregation that'll stir their heart in a way that'll get them under conviction and they might I get saved. I'm thinking about the tent meeting. And whenever we preachers get up to preach the word of God, we'll be praying and seeking God's will. And God will give the message. We'll get up and preach the message in hopes and praying that somehow that God will take that message and touch the heart of a lost loved one or someone who's backslidden, someone who needs to get things right with God. But folks, I tell you, it'll start in the singing. You hear me? Because the singing is there to get people primed and ready for the preaching. And if the Spirit is coming through the singing of God's, of God's people, it'll touch their hearts. And then when the preacher gets up and preaches the Word of God, and they hear the Word of God, how can they hear without a preacher? Hey, listen, I'm saying that when the Word of God is being preached, their hearts will get under conviction, and they'll come to the altar and get saved. And nobody will look around and say, well, that preacher done good. Look how many people got saved. Oh, no. Look how good the choir done. Look how good the one done that sang the special song. And look what God done in that song. I'm here to tell you, we are a product of God. If you love God, if you love the church, if you love being a Christian, I believe 
it'll show up in your life. Amen. It'll show up in your Christian life. It'll show up when you come to church. It'll show on you when you're at church. And folks, when you leave the church, it'll be with you when you go out the door. Hallelujah. Why? Because that's what God does with a product that belongs to him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, my Father and Lord Jesus, we're so grateful and thankful for thy many, many blessings. Lord, I thank you for thy word and what it means to our hearts and lives. I pray here tonight, God, that you'd watch over us and protect us. Lord, that you'd bring us back Wednesday night, if it be thy will. Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory for these things we ask in thy name. Amen and amen.